it's been a very crazy long day today. Um, pretty shitty day. I mean, even if there was no no sleep for a long time, it still was a pretty messed up day. But I just want to answer this one thing. Because I... Apparently somebody tried to send it to me, and they sent it to me again, and, and, and wanted me to go through it, and they thought I would change my view on documentary hypothesis. In fact, they thought it was going to change my view on documentary hypothesis so much that they wrote... Yusuf, have you read the refutations of documentary hypothesis? It has many flaws and holes, and I completely disagree with it. I will send you a link. Free online book which destroys the theory very thoroughly. A free online book which destroys the, th the theory very thoroughly. Destroys the theory very thoroughly. After you read it, it's a little long. Tell me what you think. Well, I certainly haven't delved into the book quite as such, but I, I saw their examples and their what, what they did with Genesis. Um, again, I'm not saying that these events didn't happen. In fact, I'm very confident that the Exodus happened pretty much the way it says it went down. Now the emotions and the attitudes and who's blaming who is up in the air. And we can see different factions fighting. Or at least feuding <coughs> about what their legacy is going to be. And let's check out the, uh, the author of this free online book, shall we? Craig Davis is a 1982 graduate of Baylor University. Baylor University. B-A-Y-L-O-R University. He works as a systems engineer for Cimarron, a NASA contractor. They, they, they slip NASA in there a NASA contractor at Johnson Center uh, Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. He is married, has three children, and is a member of the University Baptist Church in Houston. Craig can be contacted at and gives his his uh, email address, which I think I might actually will do that. Um This is the credentials of the author. I was expecting, you know, something like along the lines of like, you know, like Richard Elliott Friedman, who can actually read multiple ancient languages, and not just be able to read them, as I know many people can read Greek, they can make the sounds, just like um, the Urdu speakers can read Arabic, than what they're saying. I could read Latin, but I, 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 I well, actually, that's important. I, I, I read German, but I wouldn't know what it would be saying, right? Because they used the Roman alphabet. I could read it. It, it doesn't even. It says, I mean, this, this, his credentials says he's married, has three children, and is a member of University Baptist Church Houston. Because I think university churches are great, and I also think Baptist churches are great. I really think highly of them, and, and they're very open-mindedness. Let's click the gallery. What does gallery show? Um, and this is this, the book is dating the Old Testament. Oh, Lord have mercy! It goes through these things that aren't even related to the Old Testament. Uh, Temple of Amun-Ra, Egyptian relief with cattle. Cuneiform tablets. Uh, for Tel Dan Stella, um, uh, Megiddo altar to Baal. It's 
of external link, this altar to Baal at Megiddo in Israel. The altar is round with stairs, contrary to the instructions for altars built to the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Exodus 20, 26. I randomly picked this, and it falls right in my lap, and the next one is the altar to the Lord at Beersheba. This reconstructed altar to the Lord, uh, meaning the tetragrammaton, at uh, Tel Beersheba. In Israel, the altar is a square with four corners and horns in uh, compliance with the instruction of the central altar at Exodus 20:26. It gives the same reference for two competing things. However, only one elaborate central altar was supposed to be built, so this altar may have not been entirely kosher. Absolutely wrong, because we see sacrifices going on all the freaking time. This is the whole thrust of my... I mean, just looking at these few things it makes me just face palm. Now, I have to ask this person, and, and I don't think they're going to get too offended since they um, they left their name. Their, their name is My Arab Camel. I don't care about a work that's 100 years old. Um, have you read the book, very easy read, Who Wrote the Bible by Richard Elliott Friedman? Have you read that book? The NAS beat comes out shockingly clear. But I would say with probably one of the weaker translations like the NIV or the King James Bible or the New King James Bible, it only comes out startlingly clear instead of shockingly. Yusuf, have you read any refutation of the documentary hypothesis? I've read things similar as dating the Old Testament. It has many flaws and holes. That's kind of the point. Is that the, the, it's not the theory that it holds. It's the Torah itself. It's the Pentateuch. The first five books. Uh, where you have Moses arguing with Midianites and by the end of the sentence they turn into uh, uh, Moabites and nobody's been able to wrap their head around that one they're just like what this, this, this was spliced together before anybody spliced the stuff together I will send you a link the free online book which destroys the theory very thoroughly after you read it it's a little long. Tell me what you think. I guess it's just a preamble. I'll go through it. If if I get halfway through it and it's just... It shows me nothing more than what it showed me on that, that first page of Genesis and then the credentials of the non-Bible scholar or ancient history professor or professor of dead languages or professor of ancient cultures, somebody who... I, I don't care if they work for NASA, if they know nothing about history or religions or languages. And, I mean, they, they know something about ancient religion and they're a Baptist. That actually kind of shocks me. <clears throat> My reply was, I have heard and read many refutation of Doc Hype, but just short documentary hypothesis. But they all fall short. Just because we may want the Torah to be sent down by God to Moses does not affect reality. I have heard creationists say the same thing about evolution. Go ahead, send me the link, and I will watch it slash read it. I never turn down a chance to hear the other side. Please send it to me. Now this, I sent it to him a day ago. I just looked at the thing now, this website now, because I, he, he, I guess he had to resend it. He was on, I sent him a personal message. I said, thank you, I really appreciate it. Then I said, I didn't, I didn't see it. Um,
Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Trail Wanderer pops on, looks like. And says, the theory has never been destroyed, and all major Bible, all major scholar Bible ref, references referenced it. All major Bible scholars reference it. Not all of them agree with it, but you're right. Destroyed is not an accurate word to use. V. You you use the word. You said, uh, what was what, what, what was said? which destroys the theory very thoroughly. So if destroy is too strong of a word, destroy the theory very thoroughly. And Trail Wander correctly says, only fundies don't agree with it. There is certainly two accounts of everything in the Tanakh. This is a mistake by him. Um, I, I, he meant to put Torah. Um, the Tanakh is not... Um, the Pentateuch. Um, he, he meant to write Torah. He says, and I fail to see how anyone can deny it. I happen to agree with Trail Wanderer. It's not possible to deny it once you see it. And I looked at this site too, um, and I saw that they said that that it's claimed that from Genesis through Joshua that there was a combination of sources. No, that's documentary hypothesis doesn't address Joshua at all. It actually says Genesis uh, through Exodus, or, or Genesis through Numbers is a combination, and that Deuteronomy into Kings is actually one writer, or one compiler, or one redactor, uh, just working on the stuff, compiling the history. Because from Deuteronomy to Kings is a, is a history written by a writer, and then you have uh, Chronicles written by a different writer, a different view. I mean, we even have, think of this, the dating the Old Testament. This would, it's called, let's, let's go back to the, where was it? Uh, excerpt from First Genesis. Um, in most critical circles today, KJV only has talk right there. Genesis through Joshua are thought to be the work of at least four independent sources and usually labeled J, E, D, and P, written at different times and woven together by later editors. Dating the Old Testament takes a position that the books of Genesis through Deuteronomy are a unified literary work produced during the Exodus generation. Oh my God. What? This, this excerpt is a portion of the argument for the unity of these books. Note, in the book, some Hebrew characters appear in this passage, and they have been deleted in this excerpt. Why? It's not Genesis through Judges are thought to be the work of four, of at least four. It's at least five. You're forgetting in the redactor. And then you have two different Deuteronomists um, written at different times and woven together. Independent, four independent sources. Well, they weren't very independent. They were living in a very small area and they had very different views of things. Uh, and they were, the writings come in a very condensed period of time when you have northern Israel collapsing and Judah remaining strong in the south. And the redaction or the woven together by later editors. One editor, it's obvious. Usually it's tribute to Ezra. It's probably correct. It's the correct time, and he had the correct. He had a, he had all the power to do it. Basically, he was like the second Samuel almost. Um, it is common practice to break down scripture passages into outlines, which we should realize the outliners 
are Western innovations and are generally not in the mind of the Bible authors when they wrote. Now, how could you possibly know that? I'll get into this later, but this is, I mean, I'll get it in greater detail later, but this is utterly foolish. Um, I don't mean to come off as mean. It's been a rough day. Uh, <clears throat> I'd actually love to talk to somebody who's in a warmer climate right now, but don't think that's going to happen. Uh, no. And, and I'm not just saying this because it's just biased and I need documentary. I mean, I've looked into this more so than probably anybody you've come across. I've actually discovered my own stuff in documentary hypothesis. I have an old channel called John Hut Dweller. There's a series on it about do documentary hypothesis. Um, and I actually show the two different stories from Noah's Ark. Why is it that leading up to the burning bush you have one author who speaks with... Uh, I'll talk to you later. Let me put it this way. It's like if I mixed William Shakespeare with Michael Crichton and interspliced sometimes paragraphs, sometimes chapters, and sometimes sentences. Would you be able to tell them apart? In a heartbeat, you would. Boom. In an instant, you'd be able to tell them apart. But of course, that can't possibly be true, right? Because it's not like language changes over time. If I placed kings and psalms together, would you be able to pull them apart? <laughs> yeah. I will go through this, I'll give it a fair shake, but it's... It's looking extremely poor. So is... is and I'm not meaning this to be attacking or rude, but... Will thoroughly destroy, which thoroughly destroys the very theory, or I think is, uh, well, I'm not going to jump back to it, thoroughly destroys, but then you said it doesn't destroy. Have you read any works by Richard Elliott Friedman or Brooke Halperin, or the original guy, Julius Wellhausen? Again, when I'm talking about documentary hypothesis, doesn't mean I don't believe this stuff actually took place. I just think it got written down later on and with political motives. I actually do believe in the, the plagues. That may shock you, but I believe in the plagues. I actually think they happened as they, when they happened, as they, just as they happened. But not the propaganda around it. And you can clearly differentiate the two, and I think that gives us a closer view of the hand of God working, and you can sift out many parts of man, but man is very integral with it, because our God is not only a transcendent God, and God that's outside of space and time, but also one that meets his creation in the most intimate way. So, yeah, J-Text is a country bumpkin that's constantly anthropomorphizing God and just using colloquialisms and this really low, low-speak grammar and P-Text is all very grandiose. It's perfect for Christianity. And I think this would probably would destroy Orthodox Judaism. But yet, there's, I was told by somebody who was raised Jewish that um, behind closed doors, Jewish rabbis agree with it. 
you know, I met a, a rabbi and he denied it up and down, and he got very excited when I started talking about it. He, he was agreeing with a lot of the things, but then he would shut down and say, well, no, no, only the Christians would believe that. I said, I, I haven't run into Christians that believe this. But yeah, it is really promulgated by many rabbis, even though it's hush-hush kind of thing. Um, I think the Torah came from God. But it didn't come down like the Quran. And there's a lot of attitude of people in there. And a lot of bias of people in there. But it's from God. Now, I was already broken of this idea of, of an angel whispering in somebody's ear what exactly to write. I've already been broken of that idea, so it doesn't. Sh this doesn't shake any part of Christianity or anything. Not to mention it's the Old Testament. I think it's the most valuable part of the Old Testament, but it's the Old Testament. Honestly, I think we can throw Chronicles away. Probably Esther, but I think. Uh, I actually do think Genesis records some stuff that's so, it's actually more ancient than this crap that they're digging up that's extremely old. These are, people, these, these are societies that remembered things. There was a great flood. We know that the, the, uh, the Black Sea collapsed. And it's extremely obvious, this is why I hate the young earth creationists, um, that when they say day, it means an epoch, and they're not using it chronologically, it's being used liturgically. It's a liturgical work, work written by a priest. If they know anything about ancient worship or liturgical worship, and the fact that it's written in order of importance and not in how things were handed down. The sun and the moon are created before mankind. Just two days before mankind. Mankind is the pinnacle of his, his the apex of creation, is the epitome is, is what creation is pointing to. And you as you get go farther back you less and less. I mean, you have the lower and lower of uh, the importance, you know, you grass or this or that or just crawling creepy things and then you get down to just light and dark. Um, so, to I mean, this guy is actually coming at it with a 21st century mindset. Um, and it these outliners are not created by modern readers. Why is it that with any translation you can find documentary hypothesis and it's startlingly clear? With an NASB it's shockingly clear. I, I'm actually doing one of these books where I highlight it at, at, at the request of somebody right now. I'm using an NKJV, which I don't particularly care for. It's blatant, it's all get out doing it there. Um, that's just trying to render the King James into readable English. That's not going back trying to do it word for word like the NASB. I'm going to go through this and I think it'll help prove my point. I'm going to go through this video and um, I'll go through it and we'll, I'll tell you his point and I'll tell you documentary hypothesis and the viewers can make up their own mind. Peace to you. Please pray for all those who are suffering. Mind book, shall we? Craig Davis is a 1982 graduate of Baylor University. Baylor University. B-A-Y-L-O-R University. He works as a systems engineer for Cimarron, a NASA contractor. A, 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 they, they slipped NASA in there. A NASA contractor. 
Um, again, I'm not saying that these events didn't happen. In fact, I'm very confident that the Exodus happened pretty much the way it says it went down. Now the emotions and the attitudes and who's blaming who is up in the air. And we can see different factions fighting, or at least feuding <coughs> about what their legacy is going to be. And let's check out the aw the author of this free online. It's been a very crazy long day today. Um, pretty shitty day. I mean, even if there was no no sleep for a long time, it still was a pretty messed up day. But I just want to answer this one thing thoroughly. A free online book which destroys the th the theory very thoroughly. Destroys the theory very thoroughly. After you read it, it's a little long. Tell me what you think. Well, I certainly haven't delved into the book quite as such, but I, I saw their examples and their, what, what they did with Genesis, because I, apparently somebody tried to send it to me, and they sent it to me again, and, and, and wanted me to go through it, and they thought it would change my view on documentary hypothesis, in fact, they thought it was going to change my view on documentary hypothesis so much that they wrote... Yusuf, have you read the refutations of documentary hypothesis? It has many flaws and holes, and I completely disagree with it. I will send you a link. Free online book which destroys the theory very 